everybody, and welcome to Good News Freedom Show. I'm your host, Brother James Deaton, and as every week, uh, my mom and I are going to sing a song for you, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to we got a special guest with us today. So y'all pray for us as we do this song, um, Somebody Prayed. I got a message this morning. and welcome again to the Good News Freedom Show. I am your host, Brother James Deaton. And as you can tell, we got a guest with us this week. we got Brother Darren Barnett. Uh, but before we do that, every, every week, um, the, the theme of our show is Jesus Christ. Um, and the, the, verse that, the, the verse that we use is Gospel of John 12th, chapter 32nd verse. If I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And um, one other thing, as I've been telling you the last couple of weeks, the CD is done. It is good. The song you heard today is one of the songs from the CD. And uh, we just hope if um, you can get it, it'll be a blessing to you. And as I said, we have a guest this week, Brother Darren Barnett. How are you, brother? Good, brother. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Um, Every week I like to start off, I like to ask people, um, how long have you been a Christian? Uh, I date back. It'd have to be right about 29 years now. Wow. had the opportunity. I was brought up in church, but uh, still in church, the Lord began to convict my heart. Uh, I can I can go down to that that place. I remember when God dealt with me as far as the date. 
I can't remember, but I think it was about 1992. Right. I'd have been about nine years old, and uh, God had just been convicting my heart for some time, and uh, I knew I needed to be saved. Right. And um, now if you're nine years old, you probably didn't have much, but you knew you were a sinner. Um, I like to ask everybody, tell us about your life before being saved, and what led you to the Lord? So um, I had the privilege to be brought up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to a, a Christian school through about the ninth grade before going over to the public school in the tenth grade. And uh, the Bible uh, teacher, uh, we were one after, it was like a Thursday afternoon, we had a class, and the Bible teacher asked us all to write a paper about how we got saved. Mm -hmm. Now, as a kid, I remember laying in bed at night saying, Lord, save me, Lord, save me, just hearing the message but never truly understanding it. And now this paper's due, and I begin to really think about that. When, when was I saved, and what exactly does all this mean? And, man, two weeks passed by, and I never turned a paper in. Right. And so um, one young lady got up, and the teacher, it was not like a mandatory paper. They weren't forcing the kids to get saved or anything like right. that. I believe we had a teacher that really cared about her students, mm -hmm. and I believe she was just praying for her students to see who needed to be saved and, and who understood things. And, man, it's just God used that to open up a door for me. And as those two weeks passed by, I never turned that paper in. Right. And so this one young lady, she was a couple grades ahead of me, she got up and she began to read her paper that she had written about how she thought that she would was always going to heaven. She thought she was saved because of the family that she was born right, into. Right. Church on the weekends, Christian school. But now she's got to turn this paper in and she's thinking... Man, I don't remember. I don't remember anything about this. Right. And so she goes to the teacher and asked her, you know, I don't understand all this. And the teacher took a Bible, showed her how Jesus Christ died for her sins. And she's getting to this point in her paper. You know, she's reading it to the class. Right. She begins to weep about how she knew that she needed Jesus, and needed to make that decision uh, by sitting down with the teacher and the teacher using that Bible to show her Jesus Christ died on the cross for her sins. Wow. And. This is Thursday afternoon. I knew that Darren Barnett was going to die and go to hell based off of the Bible. Uh, you know, I was a good kid being right. brought up with good morals, yeah. but the Holy Spirit convicted me to show me, hey, this isn't it, Darren. You've got to make a decision yourself. So class ended that day, and I mean, now, like, we're two going on three weeks where the Holy Spirit just keeps weighing this on my heart. And we're in a week-long revival meeting the next week, and it was Tuesday night, and I looked at my mom at the invitation. I said, Mom, I've never been saved. I need to get it settled. And she said, do you want to go forward to the altar? And I, I was a very shy kid. I'm right. like, I was concerned about what other people might think, you know, yeah. my friends in the Christian school. So um, I said, no, I don't want to go to the altar. And we got in the car and we drove home that night. And I still remember sitting down on the blue stairway that leads to the upstairs of our home. And uh, just under conviction, terrible conviction. And I bowed my head and called upon the Lord to be my Savior. And man, it surely changed my life. That's awesome. No, that's um, well. That's what I've told people. I grew up in a good home. I had good, godly parents, and didn't get into trouble. My dad was a deputy in Ashland County. If you're a deputy in Ashland County and you have two first cousins that are deputies, you're not invited to any troublemaking events. <laughs> but there came a time. I was about 15 years old. Um, as good as I thought I was at 15. Somebody had to mention that my righteousness was as filthy rags to him. Absolutely. And so at 15, I knew I needed to be saved, and I did. Um, now, when did you get your call to preach? I tell you, I, I'd say the call probably started shortly after I was saved. Right. Um, unfortunately, you know, I fell into the world for some time. Mm -hmm. um, my mom and dad, they divorced when I was young and just kind of one side of the family we'd be in church, the other side of the family not so much. And so I just didn't really get plugged in. I remember at about 12 or 13 years old, just even telling my dad, I said, Dad, I feel like God wants something from me. Right. And, uh, but I, I just I didn't want sure what it was. I felt that draw to the ministry. I felt like he had something for me. But, again, fear, you know, fear even of what those kids thought about me getting saved and not going to the altar. Right. I let that fear play out in my life for yep. a long time. And I found myself in college uh, living a very ungodly lifestyle, um, you know, going to the bars, just, yeah. just things that a Christian should never be. And man, down in my heart, the, it, it was a burden I could never get away from. If Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, you've got to tell other people about this. Right. And so souls were always on the bottom of my heart, but because of fear, man, I got into a box. And I lived the life for Darren for a long time. Yeah. 
So 24 years old, God brought me to a very low place in life. And uh, I, I, I turned to him. I, I wanted to be right with God. I wanted to start learning about all these doctrines that I was taught growing up that yeah. I didn't really understand. And so from age 24 and at 30 years old, I knew God was calling me into ministry. And I find I, I went to an altar. I was supposed to work on a Sunday. And I had that Sunday off. I took the day off, and I went to church that morning. And I was under conviction, and it was like the Holy Spirit's like, you never surrendered to me, Darren. Right. You've never given total surrender. And I went to the altar that morning, and I said, Lord, whatever you want to do. And I even told the pastor, I said, I just I want to let you know I've come forward this morning to make a surrender to the Lord for whatever he wants for my life. Right. And uh, he had me get up on the pulpit there before the service ended, and I just made it, gave a testimony that I was surrendering awesome. to, to God's will for my life. That's so awesome. Um, now, I know you have an outdoor ministry. Um, Ohio's big on hunting, so if you would... Um, tell about your outdoor ministry. Yes. And it's, if you look behind us, you'll see that we've got plenty of um, the things that he does. And so if you would, tell about your outdoor ministry. Yeah, so it's very unique. Um, it's, it's amazing how God kind of brought everything into place. Uh, you know, I had an opportunity to work for the state of Ohio for right. eight and a half years with the Department of Natural Resources. I was a state watercraft officer. And, you know, I was just always in the outdoors, always just seeing folks out on the lake, uh, public hunting areas. I covered about four counties down in the south southwest part of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And just as I was growing closer to the Lord through that time in my life, um, and it was 2012, God opened a door for me to go to a large, uh, a big Baptist church, had a large wild game supper. Right. Uh, they had all kinds of different things, uh, concealed carry classes, just helping people understand the requirements and how to take the class and things like that, uh, turkey demonstration seminars, how to be a better deer hunter, right. just a lot of different things that really would draw folks to the outdoors. And as a being a hunter, I mean, I remember at six months old, I've got pictures. We're in the Allegheny National Forest right. in Pennsylvania. His dad would bow hunt. So that hunting just has always been rooted in me. And uh, during that game dinner that night, I was amazed. There was over a 1,000 people that come to that event, and they gave just a clear presentation of the gospel that evening. And I heard, later heard over 100 people come to know the Lord as their wow, Savior. that's awesome. And so God just really began to stir my heart uh, for an outdoor ministry. That's really where it started. Uh, it's amazing just things begin to fall into place after that. And uh, so our ministry, uh, our focus is reaching sportsmen. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of people look forward to that opening day of hunting season. They're ready to get after that deer or that turkey or yeah. whatever it might be. And I like to hunt on opening day as well, but the Lord's kind of kind of redirected the focus to, to more about souls. Right. Uh, man, I love to get out and drive back roads and just public hunting areas. And uh, the Lord blessed us with a very nice gospel track. Um, and basically from that time in 2012, that dinner, I just began to pray and even fast like, Lord, I just feel like these hunters and these outdoorsmen, they need to hear the gospel of yeah. Jesus Christ. And so we developed a nice gospel track. And, man, we use that when we go out on opening days or hunting shows or wherever it's at. And we go and we carry the gospel to these men, women, and families. Right. And uh, just that's a lot of personal evangelism, a lot of one-on-one -on -one soul winning. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's, right. that's what the Bible says in Luke 19.10. And that is the focus of everything that we do, seeking to reach the lost. Um, secondly, though, serving the local church. Uh, we like to help local independent Baptist churches and churches of like faith. We help them in reaching hunters in their community. Right. Uh, we come in and we help set up an event, uh, Wild Game Supper, just like that night in 2012. Man, God just stirred my heart. That's a great opportunity to bring folks in your area, come in, have some fun, learn some things about hunting, have a good meal, yeah. but then we preach to them at the end of the night, yes. and we give them the opportunity to call upon the Lord to be their Savior, and um, that's you know serving the local church. We want to help churches every way that we can to really get plugged in to hunters and sportsmen in their local communities, uh, but also supplying material for the saint. Uh, the Lord's provided tremendously with our gospel track. Right. Uh, we got the nice deer track that's on the table there. Uh, basically, we use that. It's got a good illustration of the gospel, and we make those free and available at no cost. Uh, we've even, we even ship them. Sometimes individuals call us or uh, church may contact us and say, man, we really like your gospel tracks, and the Lord's always provided. I'll, I even cover the shipping part of it, and I just send them out however right. many they want, and as long as God continues to provide that, we'll continue to supply that material for yeah. the saint because you know when you get saved when jesus really changes you 
that should give you a burden to go out and tell other people the story. Exactly. And so our ministry is just really, we're really focused on helping the outdoor folks get saved, get plugged into the local church, and then continue on in that discipleship so they can do what we're doing. Yeah. Now, um, you, you had told me that you worked for the state of Ohio. Can I you did. tell everybody what happened there? Yes. So um, I spent eight and a half <coughs> years there, and it was about my last year and a half to two years, of course. When you begin to, when you live for Christ, we look at what Christ suffered for us on right. the cross. He was not accepted. He hung on that cross because they rejected him and they hate him. And when we live for Christ, we're going to suffer affliction. Yeah. We're going to suffer persecution. I'd encourage you, if you're a Christian, man, you gotta, you got to be in suffering. I think there's a lot of Christians today that aren't feeling that suffering because they're not doing that, that commission that God gave us, right. the great commission, preaching the gospel to every creature. And so in the workplace, I had a desire to tell people about Jesus Christ. And they didn't like that. Um, they began to tell me that I needed to keep my religion at home. Um, you know, there were times I would I would arrest people on the riverbank and I would share the gospel with them while we were standing there filling out paperwork. I never took my time away from from my job. I, right. I had a duty to do, right. and as a Christian, it, it's it's good that I do exactly what I'm supposed to do in the workplace. Right. But you know, it was okay for them to talk about the Buckeyes, and it was okay to talk about them for whatever bar they went to for That's the weekend right. and whatever worldly thing was going on. But I come to realize, as soon as I begin to talk about Jesus Christ and what He did for me, man, it just affliction began to start. They, right. they didn't like that. And they began to tell me that I needed to keep my religion at home. And I just was not willing to to do what they were telling me to. One thing I could not get away from uh, was uh, Revelations chapter 20, there at verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life mm -hmm. was cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. But when you keep reading in chapter 21 of Revelation, it talks about God wiping away all tears from their eyes. Now, if Paul says to be absent from the body is to be because present with Christ. the Lord, yeah. that means those tears that we're going to shed are from folks that we see cast into the lake of fire. And I just I couldn't get away from that. And yeah. I thought, there, there's no man and there's no organization and there's no government that's going to tell me that I cannot be a testimony in the workplace. Um, I, I would deal with folks. And there was times I would leave gospel tracts with them after the arrest or the citation or just the interaction right. with the boating stuff that we did for the job. Um, I'd leave a track with them. And, man, folks, the lost world, just they hate that. And, and so I battled that with the state for about a year and a half. And uh, the Lord finally closed the door. They end up firing me for it. They made a lot of bad decisions. Uh, there was a lot of things that we probably could have went forward with on a legal point. But talking with some Christian lawyers, and they, they were willing to move forward with cases. But I just, I just didn't have a peace from the Lord right. to, to really raise my hand. I was asking God for an open door because I knew he was calling me into the ministry. And, you know, I, I know I left a, a good testimony for some folks that I worked with that still probably need to be saved to this day. Uh, Lord willing that that'll be something everlasting in their life that one day right. they'll call upon Christ. But trying to live like Christ, you, you know, he, he was hanging on that cross unrecognizable. Uh, and he was doing it for us because he loved us. And so I just tried to have that, that mindset in, in my work space there at that time. And God used it in my life, and God's opened a much bigger door, a much greater door. I mean, it's exciting now. We're traveling all over the U.S., helping churches, just doing all kinds of cool things. Yeah. So. Well, that's, a, you know, being a Christian, you have to. Now, I don't, I work in a shop, and I mean, when we bring a new person in, when I get a chance, you know, I don't go around preaching my religion onto them, or, you know, it's not my religion, my salvation. But when the door's opened, I'm taking my chance. Because it's like you said at the end of the day, um, it was in September, a man that I worked with for probably 10 or 15 years. I'm not at that shop anymore, but he had a heart attack, and he died at the shop. Man. And it's like I knew he knew what I stood for. Yeah. And it makes you wonder, did you do enough that he got saved before he, you know, before he left the world? Absolutely. And it's like you know, the government can try to tell us to be quiet, but I don't think it's working. Yeah. No. You know, even in these countries, I don't know if you've heard stories, but in countries like Iran and um, in African countries, you know, where it's down, where it's looked down upon, people are being saved. Yeah. You know, I think even in China, it's one of the biggest, one of the communities where Christians are coming out, you yeah, know. Absolutely. So you can try your best to stomp us out, but we're not going anywhere until the Lord says yeah. <laughs> we're gone. Absolutely. And this is another thing. When you look at nature, um, now I live in Ohio, you know, I've often wondered where, what cities look like where corn don't grow. And, um, 
but then you see the deer. But then I'd, I've been to Africa three times, and just to see the wildlife that you see on National Geographic's, you can't tell me there's not a God. I mean, it's just absolutely the amazing. The visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Yep. It's so, amazing. Uh, now, if you would, um, do you have any upcoming events you can tell the people about so, that you're having? Yeah, we have been super busy. We just come off the road. We were in Arkansas, but really the last three months, man, we've been in a lot of different states throughout the U.S. Um, we're, we're coming to that point in the year where things kind of level off a little bit, not a whole lot of busy meetings. But after the first of the year, uh, we'll, we'll roll towards Texas. I got right. some wild game dinners and some big game suppers planned in Texas. Um, then from there, we're going to shift over into Georgia, and we'll be doing some turkey shoots, just kind of more some hands-on uh, firearms and just having fun fellowship out in the back, back churchyard. Right. Now, um, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, my, uh, so our website, the name of our ministry, again, Sixth Day Outdoor Ministry, and our web address is sixthdayom.com. Of course, sixth day, you're going to spell that out just like in the Bible. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. That represents man, creation. God gave us dominion over that. So Six Day Outdoor Ministries, our website, all of our information is right there. Um, If you want to reach out to me personally, you can get me at 513-260-9919. Go ahead and do that again. Again, it's 513-260-9919. 260-9919. Okay. And we will have that. Um, we'll have his phone number on that uh, when this show is edited. We'll put that on there. And now another thing I want to um, ask you about is um, what do you think of things going on in the world today? I think that these things have to take place in order for Christ to return. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it's a good thing that all these things are going so bad because it's just showing more evidence to the scriptures that one day Christ is going to come back. Um, a lot of people are, are worried. They, they get worried about everything. But, but when you know Christ as your Savior, when you f- find your peace, even as a Christian, we got a lot of Christians today, they're just they're uneasy. And the problem is because is they're not finding their peace and their joy in Jesus. Right, not sold out. We, f- we find our peace and joy in Jesus Christ, and it doesn't matter what happens in the world. Right. Um, it, it's a bad place. A lot of things are changing. I, I'm scared to what my kids are going to deal with, but mm-hmm. Lord willing, they can see Daddy taking a stand for what's right and learn that the Bible is going to help them get through life. Right. So I just, man, I'd encourage anybody, just hold on to the Lord. He's, yeah. he's you, you can deal with anything in life when you yeah. really look to Him. Yeah. Well, that's what I've said. Um, the thing is going, people have said the vaccine shot is um, the mark of the beast. It's not the mark of the beast. Yeah. When, the, when the mark of the beast comes, you're going to know it's the mark of the beast. Yep. There will be no doubt what it is. Absolutely. But I've told people it's also, I think it could be a prelude <laughs> to the mark of the beast. Yeah. Because if we can get every, all these countries to bow down and do as somebody tells you that, I don't even know where the, where the order is coming from, but it's like, um, it's, it's coming. Yeah. I've told people my whole life, oh. I've heard that um, we are in a place where the Lord's coming back. This is the 11th hour. And I, as a little boy to now, I think we're closer now than we've ever been. Absolutely. Um, now, we got about five minutes here. If you would, um, take a look in that camera right there and tell somebody why they should come to the Lord and what he has to offer. Make it like an invitation. So we first off have to realize that the Bible is a real book. Uh, it is a very precious book. It proves itself. And one thing very important about that book is the Bible says that there is a judgment for sin. Being a law enforcement officer, uh, I saw it on a day-to-day basis. You know, you write somebody a ticket or you arrest somebody for drinking and driving or you deal with a fatality from alcohol-involved incident. Uh, Those folks go to the courtroom and they pay for the consequence of what they did regardless of what lifestyle they were had brought up, whether they were in church every day of their life, whether they were thought of highly in their society, they had to pay the consequence. And that's exactly what the Bible tells us about our sin. Uh, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says we will pay for our sin. Uh, There's a rich man in Luke 16. He was so focused on the things of this world, uh, he refused to trust in Christ. And the Bible says, and the rich man died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torment. Man, I encourage you today, hell is not worth it. God created hell in eternal destruction for the devil and his fallen angels. God loved mankind so much that even though Adam sinned, 
God made a way for us all still to be saved. Yeah. He's like that attorney that steps in our place that says, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight the case uh, for this individual. And you know what, today around the U.S., there's a lot of people that can walk out of the courtroom guilt-free, innocent, when they were truly guilty, when they truly did the things that they did. Now, they have to pay for an attorney. We don't have to pay for Jesus Christ. Right. He, he gave us the free gift of eternal life. He laid it all down so we could all be saved and we could all know him. But he left it up to us. Adam made a choice in the Garden of Eden to take of that fruit God forbidden him. And he created us with free choice. God's not going to make any person go to heaven today. But he made the way that we can go to heaven. He made the way that we don't have to pay for our sin. The Bible says Jesus Christ laid his life down because he loved all of mankind. And the Bible says that uh, we can be saved through faith. For, for by grace are you saved through faith. And it's not of yourself. It's the gift of God. And you know what we have to do for, with gifts? We just have to simply reach out right. and receive them. They're free. We don't have to pay a thing for them. Uh, there's a lot of people in the world today looking for happiness, and they're looking for joy. And you know one thing with the hunters? They think that that big buck or that big turkey or that hunting experience is going to fill that inner joy they're looking for. And they realize, man, they hit that success sometimes, but just in days, they're already hungry for the next success. Right, they just right. want more and more. And yeah. we can take that and apply to anything in life, any material gain. There's nothing in this life that's going to fill our emptiness outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says Jesus Christ came to this world for one purpose, to pay for our sin. Uh, you see, in that courtroom, there's a cost. Sometimes it's a jail sentence. Sometimes it's a fine for driving too, down, uh, driving too fast down the highway. But Jesus Christ, he paid our sin for us. He paid the consequence so we don't have to pay for it. And if he says that if we would just truly trust in him, repent and believe the gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Bible says in a moment he'll save us and he'll change our life. Amen. This is what Romans ten thirteen says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, what a God that we serve. Amen. He laid his life down so we could be set free from the chains of this world. Right on. Um, now, we're going to have all the information. We're going to have your um, website, and we're going to have your phone number up. That way, if people want to get a hold of you, um, it'll be up as this is airing. Yep. Um, and now, we're going to take a second here. If you don't mind, we'll do a closing prayer. Absolutely. Um, our blessed Lord, as we come to you, Father, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come. We thank you for Brother Darren being here today, dear Lord, and ask that you'll just continue to touch his ministry, that he can continue to grow, and it can reach people that are lost, dear Father, Lord. Lord, we love you and thank you for everything you've done for us, everything you're going to do. Um, you are, we are so unworthy, and we are so thankful for everything you've done for us. And Lord, we're going to ask that you bless everybody that's watching this program, that, that their heart might be tugged upon and they can be saved. Thank you for your blessings on us, and in Jesus' name we'll pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming, Brother Darren. Hey, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Yes, sir. And as I like to tell you guys every week, be good to each other on purpose. Good Lord willing, we'll see you next week. And see ya. Bye. <laughs>